Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome once again to this our program, Bible Beyond the Basics. It's a pleasure to have you in our space and thank you for inviting us into your homes, wherever you are in your personal space. We appreciate your company. This is another episode of the program in which we go beyond the basics. This program is brought to you at this time by Dikayuma Ministries International, a faith-based ministry headquartered in a Spanish town, Jamaica. However, we are all over the world. You may visit us online at dikayuma.com that's D-I-K-A-I-O-M-A dot com. And of course, we are on Facebook. And sure, here we are as well on our YouTube channel. We're so happy that you have chosen to join us in the study. Um, Dikim Ministries, we have a worship service every Saturday and Wednesday night. And let me just share with you our Zoom link. It is 883-3844-4496. Again, and it's on the screen, 883-3844-4496. And the password, as you can see, is DMI. With me in studio today are my colleagues. And I introduce the beautiful lady first, Sister Candice Reynolds. Hello, Sister Reynolds. How are you today? I'm doing well, Dr. Baldwin, Pastor Moses. Thanks for having me again on this wonderful program. It's a privilege to be here. Wonderful. And our veteran, Pastor Moses, is here as well. And uh, it would appear as if the COVID restrictions <laughs> is doing you very well. You're That's healthy. Uh, God be praised. Thank wonderful. God for his grace. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, as we mentioned, we just want to pray for those who are having a hard time because of COVID. Many persons have lost loved ones. Others, you know, are going through the pangs of the financial crises and so many dislocations that come with this pandemic. And we, as we study and as we pray, we want to remember those who suffer a little more than the others of us at this time. So here we are again on Bible Beyond the Basics. And what's our topic, Pastor? Uh, what, what was the topic? Law and Covenant. We are continuing that study on Law and Covenant. Great. The law and the Covenant. You know, and I made a presentation just this last Saturday, March 20, 2021, and I mentioned some things that we are talking about here in the presentation that was in Christian Scholars Forum regarding the Law and Covenant. And uh, people have been raising some eyebrows, some people getting some pushback, and some people are, you know, a little bit uncomfortable, some suffering a little bit of cognitive dissonance, so to speak. However, uh, we mention and we share in love and we try our best to, quali to, to, to clarify. And uh, hopefully as we go through, we will be enlightening to our listeners, to our audience. Hey, why not let us have prayer before we get into this week's fascinating study. Uh, Sister Candice, would you mind praying for us? Okay, let us pray. Father, give you thanks, I give you praise for another opportunity to just come and to just get into your word, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can dig beyond the surface, oh Lord Jesus, and find the gems that are within scripture and to be able to share it with the audience. Father, we pray, dear God, as we share today, as we discuss law and covenant, Father, we pray, God, that you inspire us and inspire the heroes as well. We pray, God, that you bring fresh revelations, oh God, and that we ourselves and the hearers will be edified and Jesus will be glorified, oh God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you just be with us even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's do a quick recap of what we did last week. A quick recap of what we did last week. Uh, last week, we defined covenants. And uh, help me out, please. We say that covenant was what? 
Covenant was a binding agreement, uh, mm -hmm. similar to a contract today, and we uh, identify that when used in the Bible, uh, yes. there is much more to it. Uh, covenant was made uh, between two equals or between a superior party yes. or a, and an inferior party. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yes. And we identified that the covenant had certain aspects, aspects to it. Aspects to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the historical prologue and yes. stipulations and, you know, a, the, the depository. The depository. Yes. Mm -hmm. Certain Lessons and curses. Lessons and curses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before you go to that, though, before you go to that, though, Sister Candice, you, you, you mentioned something of a relationship between law and covenant last week. What was that? All right, definitely, Dr. Baldwin. Um, law and covenant are always used. We see it within scripture. It is used interchangeably. You really mm -hmm. cannot separate the two because... Um, when you read the scriptures, you will find that laws are usually found within the context of covenants. Okay. And so before we can understand what law meant, we first have to understand what covenants meant in Bible yes. times. Uh, thank you so very much. A very, very important point. Law and covenant are inextricably linked. You uh, law is the fleshing out of covenants, huh? Yes, it is. And we read some passages, etc., in which we showed how the two words are used yes, interchangeably yes. throughout the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. Very, very important point. So the first pillar that we want to plan. Mm, is that law and covenant are inextricably linked, are tied together. Law equals the fleshing out of covenants. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Very, covenant very, 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 very important. It's a very extremely important principle that we want to lay down. And it was stemming from that now, Pastor Moses, as you delineate the different dimensions of covenant. And by the way, you were talking about the suzerainty covenant there, the covenant made between the suzerain, the king, a great one, the superior one, and the vassal, the inferior person. Uh, and when we look at that covenantal formation, covenantal style, we see where law and covenant is inextricably linked because that covenantal formation, which was natural and very much popular in the ancient world, had a number of parts or dimensions to it. Huh? So first of all, there was what you said was the historical prologue. prologue huh? And what was that again? What, what, what would that entail? Anyone? It was Pastor the Moses, Mr. Candy. Recounting of that which the suzerain did for mm -hmm. the vassal, you know, that mighty act. The mighty act, huh? Yes. Very interesting, you know, very interesting. So here, picture the scene now. A covenant is about to be made. Oh, the, 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 the technical word they use in the Old Testament is a cut, karat, the cut a covenant. A covenant is about to be made. Here is the king or the, 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 the mighty one, the, 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 the warrior who has subjugated the other party or to whom the other party is looking up to. And so the king comes and he said, okay, we're going to make a covenant. Here I will lay out to you the great, my greatness, the mighty act that I have done on your behalf. So we have, we, 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 the king would say, because I rescued you from the other tribes which were trying to destroy you, 
because I provided for you water and food and grain, and I ensure your trade routes, etc. because I defended you against all the other adversaries and enemies. Therefore, uh, what follows then? Stipulation. You're saying something, Candice? Yes, as Pastor Moses said, Stop saying that there was a stipulation. Stipulations. So, sure, the rules and the, the regulations. The do's and the don'ts. Yes. Mm? So, and, 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 and we see the, that model presented in Exodus chapter 20, for example, yeah. and yeah. many other places, Deuteronomy 4 5. I am the Lord God brought Israel to Sinai. He was about to make a covenant with them. And how did the covenant start? It? I am the Lord thy God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That illustrates what? The historical prologue, which leads now into the stipulations. Exactly. That the, 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 the mighty act that he did, yes. that now forms the basis for, as you said, the stipulations. Exactly. And so in Exodus 20, God having said that, we see the thou shalt of the Ten Commandments following. Huh? Yeah. And as part of the covenant document, having done, you know, a mighty act on behalf of the vassals and you now placing the stipulations, another element that is listed, you know, if they obeyed the covenant, then what would happen to them? Blessed. They would be blessed. They would be blessed. Mm -hmm. And we see that in the Ten Commandments, where I think verse two and three, it says, hey, with what? It Go in mercy unto yeah. thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Huh? And uh, if you refuse, mm -hmm. curses. Curses. Yes. And so what yes. we have there in Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5. Verse 5 yes. here, yes. God said he would visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, to the upon third the and fourth, fourth, the fourth generation. generation. Those that hate me. Mm, curses. Yeah. So, first of all, mighty historical act which formed the basis and the legitimacy for one, two, stipulations, do's and don'ts. If you obey, then you receive the blessings. 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 And if you disobey, curses. You receive the curses, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was how people in the ancient world drafted covenants. And we see the same thing in the Bible. A very important thing, you know, is that the Bible reflects the culture of its time. Am I right? Yes, definitely. Right. That's the reason why we must first understand the cultural background to the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament was in Hebrew, a Semitic language, yes. and reflects the cultural practices of the time. God communicates to people in the language that they can understand, huh? and in their culture. No? So going back to the covenant now, so there are blessings or curses, and we also discovered that the, there would be a time for rehearsal of the covenant. Huh? Yes, definitely. definitely. And we see that in the reflected in the Sabbath commandment, would naturally, as Israel would rest, every seventh day, they will have a time to rehearse and talk about the covenant to the family, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, another part of it, as we see in Exodus chapter, I think is uh, 24, 19 and 24, a depository. Mm -hmm. a depository. And what, what, what was that again? Yeah, that, that's where we identified that uh, each party in the covenant would have a copy of the covenant document. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, back at that time, in that mm -hmm. culture, the suzerain, all right, he would have a copy, and the, the vassal, the inferior part, would also have a copy, and it would mm -hmm. be kept in the temple of the gods. Exactly. Right? And we see this reflecting in Israel, where uh, the law was kept in the Ark of the Covenant, Table within the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A reflection of the, the, the ancient world. Huh? And yes. uh, it was said that the covenant document will be at the feet of the gods. Yeah. So in Israel's temple, in the most holy place, the ark representing God, the document, the Ten Commandments, the tables of the covenant, very important point again, you know, it's called the tables of the covenant. Exodus 34, verse 28. Huh? It was placed at the 
in the mercy seat beneath the cherubims, the cherubims representing Yahweh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another document we placed in the, 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 the temple. Well, Israel only had one temple, yeah. one Lord, one sovereign. Huh? Mm-hmm. But, but we see the principles, you know, re- re- reflecting there. Uh, let's move on a little bit. Let's move on a little bit. And uh, let me say that uh, the Sinaitic Covenant reflects all of these parts more in particular. The other dimensions of other, other type of covenants we list just now, you have portions or so of these elements mentioned there, but the principle remains the same throughout. So let's look at the, 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 the major covenants now that we have throughout scripture. Hmm? Where do we begin? Yeah, we begin with the Edenic Covenant. That's Edenic the covenant. covenant that we encounter in the Bible. Mm. And it's concentrated in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Yes. And chapter 3 as well. Mm. Yes. Very, 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 very important. So what was the mighty act that God did in the Edenic Covenant? Creation. He created the world. He, he, he created brought the world. Order out of chaos. Brought order out of chaos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it was based then on his mighty act of creation that God, you that know, God would, you know, bring laws and he gave laws to Adam and Eve. Mm. So were there any laws given to Adam and Eve in the garden? Definitely. There were a number of laws. Uh, for example, Genesis chapter 1. Verse 28, God mm-hmm. told them to be fruitful and to multiply. Mm-hmm. In that same verse, he also told them to have dominion over the animals. Uh, in verse 29, he gave them the particular food that they should eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, when you jump over to Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 15, he placed the man in the garden and told him to take care of the garden. And also mm-hmm. chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, that he should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So a number wow. of laws flowed. A number of that. regulations and stipulations. Uh, uh, there, there's so much to be learned from this, you know. There's so much that can be learned from this. By the way, uh, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 20, and Hosea chapter 6 and verse 7 speaks of the Edenic experience as covenant. Very important. The word covenant doesn't occur in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 per se, but the ancients reading the document would have understood it as such because it's all drafted in a covenantal framework, so to speak. That's the reason why Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33 verse 20 and Hosea chapter six verse seven speaks of the Eden experience as covenant. Huh? It, it was co- it's a covenant document and is also a sanctuary or temple structure framework. So much can be learned in that, but we will take those up in another bad review of the basics situation. But as you're saying, it's a, it's a mighty act and there is there were, were, were laws yes. that were given. Hmm? So that's our first covenantal framework, and we'll get back to that and plow uh, and mine some lessons from that. Uh, what's the other major covenant within scriptures? This again is. All right. So the other major covenant is the covenant with Noah, mm-hmm. which can be found in Genesis nine one to eight. Really, the story starts from Genesis 6 to 8 when there was mm-hmm. a flood and mm-hmm. God saved Noah and his family um, mm-hmm. from that flood. And after the flood, he cut the covenant with Noah. Mm-hmm. So the mighty act was the flood, was this with salvation, deliverance from the, from flood, the flood or out of the flood. Exactly. Mm. And then laws followed. What was one of the stipulations? Laws, laws followed, um, just like with any other covenant, mm-hmm. within any other covenant. Um, so some mm-hmm. of the stipulations were that they should eat plant food, which is found mm-hmm. in Genesis 9, verse 3. Yes. They could eat animal food, which they could eat was animal a little... Food? Yeah, it was different okay. from... <laughs> different, was different from, from within the, 
different from the Edenic covenant. It, mm-hmm. could eat covenant. it could eat animal food here. And they should reproduce and replenish the earth. Good. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, what, I, what we're seeing there is a, a continuation and discontinuation. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Some other things carry over. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what, I mean, what carried over? Like the eating of the mm-hmm. plant food. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. And the reproduce. Yeah. And reproduce. And dominion. As a yeah. matter of fact, when you read Genesis chapter, let me see, six, uh, seven, eight, yeah. especially when Noah emerged from the ark, it sounds very much like Genesis chapter one, you know, two, or Genesis chapter one and two. Very much. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. So that's an, another covenantal framework, and God and, and Veer. You know, is specifically say that he's making a covenant, he's cutting a covenant with Noah, and he gave rainbow as, as the sign. covenant sign or seal. And we are moving on now, another major covenant. Abrahamic covenant. Abrahamic covenant. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe you, you may want to illustrate that on the screen for us, Pastor, as we go, so that our viewers can just see the sequence yes thanks for sharing your screen okay great so we have the adamic covenant and then we have the abrahamic covenant huh and what was that again now where is that found genesis chapter 12 genesis chapter 17 yes that was a covenant that god made with abraham when he called him out of ur of the chaldeans and god made a cut a covenant with Abraham, chapter 12, chapter 17. And th- th- there's so much to be learned from that. For, for, for this presentation, we are basically identifying the major covenants that we have within you know, scripture, salvation, history. And it's very interesting when God called Abraham, he made a covenant with him. And God, as it were, made the covenant in the usual covenantal style and expression and understanding of the time. Where, you know, remember the story, God gave Abraham a a dream, he went in a trance and they cut the animals in two and place, divide the animals. You know know that's what I'm talking about? And uh, then in uh, the night's vision, God, as it were, walked between the animals. A common covenantal practice of the time where two parties making a covenant, they'll get animals, cut them into, and uh, divide them up, walk between them. What they were saying is, if you renege, if you go back on your word, as these animals are severed, so let you be cut in two. Hmm? Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Moving on. The next major covenant. This is the pivotal covenantal arrangement in the Old Testament. Which one is this now? Sinaitic covenant. Sinaitic covenant. Yes. This is the candies. Tell us a little bit about the Sinaitic covenant. So the Sinaitic covenant, we find that in Exodus 19 and 20. Exactly where God made a covenant with the children of Israel at Sinai. This is after he delivered them out of bondage, out of bondage in Egypt. So yes. he delivered them from the Egyptian bondage. And then at Mount Sinai, he cut a covenant with them. And this is what we refer to as the Sinaitic covenant. And this covenant contains the most laws, or the largest concentration of laws in the Old Testament. Beautiful, the beautiful, the beautiful. So very, very important. So very, very important. So at Sinai, as you rather say, God brought Israel there and he, he, the, 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 he came down on Mount Sinai and uh, in thunder and lightning and uh, he, the, the covenant was made an elaborate, you know, the, the discussion and uh, fleshing out of that in the book of Exodus, different parts of Exodus rehearsed again in Deuteronomy. Uh, A very, very important dimension regarding the Sinaitic Covenant, there's so much about it, is that the Sinaitic Covenant or the covenant made at Sinai uh, had the largest body of laws in the Old Testament. Am I right? 
Yes, definitely. In comparison to the Edenic, the Noic, and uh, you know the Abrahamic covenant, the Sinai covenant has these many, many laws. What was at the central hub of the Sinaitic covenant where law is concerned? The Decalogue. Uh, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, of course. By the way, the, the, the Sinaitic covenant had it, it, its mighty act as well. What was the mighty act regarding the Sinaitic covenant? Deliverance from Egypt. Egyptian the deliverance from Egypt. Deliverance from Egypt. Uh, we skipped the mighty act with the Abrahamic covenant, which was call of Abraham out of earth the Chaldees. No, the mighty act, the mighty act of God, the suzerain, was the deliverance from Egypt. So based on that deliverance from Egypt, God was now taking the people unto himself. He had rescued them. He had done something great and wonderful for them. Yeah. Uh, he gave them a salvation experience. Hmm? The lesson to be learned is that before God... Uh, will ask us to do anything, he will do something for us. Sorry. Front, huh? Definitely. All that's his biddings, you said, are his enablings. I'm sorry? And I'm saying that's a very good lesson for us to learn. Yeah. You no, know, very good lesson for us to learn because we we, we recognize sometimes as, as Christians today, we, we become so fixed on what we must do for God. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we forget that God first did something for did us. Something for us. <laughs> and we see that coming through all the covenants. That's a pattern throughout. It's a pattern. God did something, and then he asked us to do something. All right? Yes, yes, yes. So as you go throughout your life and you, you know, you're looking at all the requirements, so to speak, yes. in your Christian walk. Just remember that God has done something already for you. The, the, we, we're going to come back to the, uh, the Sanzi Covenant and, and mine is some more, but let's just, you know, identify now the other covenantal arrangement. And what was that? Before we move on to the other covenant, um, Dr. Please. Baldwin, mm -hmm. um, considering that, the, that these laws are these major laws, Mm. Um, were picked to the mighty act that God did for the Israelites, mm -hmm. the deliverance from Egypt. Does that mean that um, believers today, therefore, cannot um, impose or say to a Christian today that they are obligated to keep those Ten Commandments as they were given within that covenantal document since we were not delivered from Egypt. Okay, wow. You are pushing us to go to another lesson and principle to be learned from all of these covenantal engagements. Huh? So okay. let's just... Let's just dwell on that some more, since as you are pushing us, I guess our audience will hear that as well. Very, very important point you make there. Very, very important point you make there. The, the, the principle is going throughout the Old Testament is that the believer, the individual was responsible for the laws under the covenant under which he or she stood. Am I explaining that carefully? How could I say that better? Definitely. Um, that's a good way to say it. Another way to say it mm -hmm. is that the laws were only enforceable exactly. under the particular covenant under which they were given. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Adam, for example, yeah. Adam, should was required only to eat Animal. fruits, Plant food. fruits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that was not enjoined on Noah. <laughs> yeah, am I right? Definitely, he was allowed to eat meat. Yes, allowed to eat meat. Yeah, and when we come to Noah, we see Noah had a covenant sign of rainbow. Mm -hmm. Correct, but that was not the covenant sign given to Abraham. Yeah. It was circumcision. It was circumcision. Yeah. Uh, and the covenant sign in the Garden of Eden was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. evil. The decisive element. Huh? Yeah. 
Yeah. But the covenant sign on the north was different. Mm -hmm. Under Abraham, it was different. Huh? And when we come to the Sinaitic covenant, we see laws are now applicable, enforceable to Israel that were not enforceable. Therefore, to, 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 to Abraham. Uh, let me see. I, the, the one I'm thinking of coming to mind now is that uh, Jacob, Jacob Leviticus was to, to marry. Um, he married two sisters. Yes. Because in Leviticus. In Leviticus Obeda. chapter 18 and 90. Yes. Say so you ought not to marry your sister. Yeah. Leviticus chapter 18 and 19. But Abraham married his sister, uh, Sarah. Yeah. And uh, I, I think we should look at that passage in Leviticus chapter 18, I think it was, it, it is. Yeah, in Leviticus chapter 18, verse nine. Leviticus 18, verse nine. Okay. It says, Can I read for the candies? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it reads, okay, Leviticus 18, verse 9. You are not to have sexual intercourse with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's, whether born at home or born elsewhere. You are not to have sex with her. Okay, so it is saying neither your full sister or your half sister. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Abraham was married to it's Sarah, so. his sister. And you mentioned Jacob there again. I think Jacob was married to Pastor Moses. Um, Jacob was married to two sisters, which Leviticus chapter 18, verse 18, forbade that. Right? It says, nor shall you take a woman as a rival to her sister to uncover her nakedness while the other is alive. Okay. And there are many other examples we could give. So Abraham, however, was not under the Sinaitic covenant. Yeah. And uh, so Abraham was not required that. However, Israel required that. It's very interesting that Deuteronomy chapter 5 says that the Sinaitic covenant was made with the children of Israel, but was not made with their fathers. Huh? Very, very important. Yeah. So... To answer your question, therefore, Sister Candice, is that are we required to obey a law which was not given under the a particular covenant? Or, even if it con even if it continues mm -hmm. into the other covenant. So for example, you just pointed out that in, in the Edenic covenant, Adam was allowed to eat fruit mm -hmm. but also we see in the no in the covenant with noah he was also allowed mm -hmm. to eat um mm -hmm. plant food plant food or fruits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. however it was under another covenant yes so there 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 are aspects of a covenant there are aspects of there are some laws that might carry Continue. over to another mm -hmm. covenant However, the way in which they were enforced within the prior covenant may not be the same way that they are supposed to be enforced in another covenant. Yes. Is that right? Correct. Or to say it another way, the enforceability of the particular law derives from the covenant under which it stood. So yes. when... Uh, Noah ate fruits as were the Adam in the garden. He was eating fruits not because it was given under Edenic covenant, but because under his particular covenant, yeah. such law was you know required. So, in other words, there may be a carryover, yes, but the law is always enforced based on the covenantal arrangement under which it stood. Very, very important principle. So, so based on what you're saying, Doc, um, this shed some light on the passage in Genesis 26. Genesis yes. Chapter 26, verse 5, where it yes. says, 
Abraham obeyed. God said, Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this identifying then that what it is saying is that Abraham kept those laws that were given to him under his covenantal arrangement. Exactly. He did not to obey my statutes and my laws, again, obey the statutes and the laws given under his particular covenantal arrangement, not necessarily all laws, etc. For example, Abraham was not required to, you know, go into the holy or the most holy place or take an animal to a sanctuary. Yes. <laughs> that was not under his arrangement, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Abraham built his altar wherever he found himself and offered the sacrifice. And Deuteronomy, contrary to that, Deuteronomy chapter 12, so you ought not to just build an altar and offer a sacrifice any and anywhere. You must go to the place that the Lord himself chooses. So Abraham was not obeying that. Why? Because he was not under that covenantal arrangement. Huh? And we can see dozens of other examples as we go through. A very, very important point that the Christian or rather the person in relationship to God is required to obey the laws as they come from the, the, the covenantal engagement under which they, they find themselves. God is always being appropriate and applicable and adjustable. Yeah. Very important. So let's so wind up, do the last great covenantal engagement that we have now, which was that? Covenant with Jesus, the new covenant. The new covenant with Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The new covenant with Jesus. New covenant with Jesus. And again, we have another mighty act. Yes. And what is that mighty act of Jesus? Life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Life, death, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. This is the blood of the new covenant, Matthew 26. And out of Jesus, we have laws rules and regulations flowing am i right definitely hmm? and, and and we have it flowing in a more potent way a more potent way because as we will realize that the laws that flowed out of the previous covenants yes uh, they are identical in no way can the abrahamic and the Sinaitic. these were codes for the law flowing out of the new covenant mm -hmm. with a person Wow, wow, wow. So Jesus embodies the covenant in every sense of the word. Huh? He yeah. is the mighty act, and he's also the laws that emerge from the mighty act. Huh? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's all encased in, in what the New Testament is saying, that Jesus is a fulfillment of the entire Old Testament scriptures. Yeah. of the entire covenantal arrangement from Genesis coming all the way through. Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 5, 38 to 40, you are studying the scriptures, but they are they which testify about me. Mm -hmm. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. Huh? Romans 10 verse 4, Christ is the end, the fulfillment, the telos of the law where their law means tore the entire Old Testament, huh? Yeah. So Christ is the fulfillment of the covenant. And another study will show that he is also God's law personified or God's law walking around, so to speak. He is just, he's not the gift of God. He's also the, the demand of God, huh? Yeah. All right. All right. Yes, there we have it. All the laws, all the covenants points to Jesus. So the Christian, therefore, is obligated to obey God's laws, God's commands, as what? As they, they flow, flow out, of out of Jesus. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's the reason why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Huh? Mm -hmm. What? And I... And, and I'm so happy that we can bring this out, Dr. Baldwin mm -hmm. and Sister Candice in Bible Beyond the Basics because there are so many 
of us as Christians that don't understand this principle. And what we are doing, we are mixing up the covenants, mixing up yeah. the laws given on the previous covenants. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that it is binding upon us as Christians today. But mm -hmm. if we yeah. are to understand the basic principle yes. that laws are given within the context of covenants mm -hmm. and, and a law is only enforceable under mm -hmm. the covenant under which it is given, we'll recognize that as Christians, living under the new covenant, living under the covenant of Jesus, that we only keep those laws that flow out of Jesus. As you said, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. So, yes. Very important yes. principle. Very important principle. Very important principle. And we will flesh it out some more, you know, in subsequent studies in which we will demonstrate that the law as it emerges from Jesus is not one and the same as the law as it emerges from the previous covenants, from Exodus 20 or Genesis chapter 1, etc. You know, a quick example, quick example. In, in, in Genesis chapter 1, the covenant, the, the, the stipulation on Adam and Eve was that they should reproduce and have kids, marry and replenish the earth. Was Jesus married? Not at all. Did they have children? Not at all. Adam and Eve could not eat meat in the garden. Yeah. Did Jesus eat meat? Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course he did. Mm -hmm. huh? He was not under the Edenic arrangement. Huh? Mm -hmm. And so many others we could, you know, look at and, and go through. And just, we want to, to add, thank, just to add, Dr. Yes, Bolling, please, before, we, before we wrap up, we mentioned the signs for the different covenants. The sign for the new covenant um, is actually Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So, exactly. whereas for the Edenic covenant was the tree of knowledge of good and good and evil, evil. Mm -hmm. For the Noah covenant, Noah covenant was the rainbow, rainbow mm -hmm. Abrahamic mm -hmm. covenant, circumcision. Circumcision. For the new covenant, it's Jesus and the yes. Holy Spirit. And, and, and you skip over the, the Sinaitic there. Sinaitic. The, the, the sign for that is the Sabbath. Well, the Sabbath and also circumcision <laughs> flowed over as well. They both were signs yeah. of the covenant. But the, 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 the chief uh, covenant sign was the Sabbath in the Sinaitic covenant. And in the new covenant, here, here we have it. There we have it. There we have it on the street. Uh, the children yeah. of good and evil, the Edenic covenant. No covenant, the rainbow. Abrahamic covenant and pass have something they're trying to, rec to, to, to symbolize <laughs> circumcision. <huh? laughs> uh, it was another particular organ. <laughs> and uh, that yes. little, you know, drawing oh, out that man, organ that there. And the circumcision removal of the foreskin of the male penis. That was, you know, the practice within Israel of a sign of the covenant, a sign that the people belonged to God in a special way. And then come to Sinaitic. It was the day, Exodus 31, is the covenant sign. Hmm? Yeah. And then now it comes to Jesus. No? John 6, 27 says that Jesus is God's seal or God's sign. On him has God the Father set his seal of approval. John 6, 27. And Ephesians chapters 1, 13 and 14, chapter 4, verse 30, and other places in the New Testament, it speaks of the oh, Holy right. Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus has yeah. been yeah. the covenant sign, covenant seed. Um, it, 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 it's so beautiful as we study the Bible within this framework and look at the principles outlaid, we can better understand how God wishes to communicate with us. Huh? Any closing thoughts? I'm just here listening, Doc, and you know, what is resounding with me is that you know, the laws flow from out of the covenant, flow from the particular mighty act, you know, and that laws are only enforceable under the covenant under which they are given. And I am saying that we have to be careful then when we see as Christians at times and preachers get up and say, you know, we must keep all of God's laws. Yes. You know, that can be very misleading. Yes. <laughs> Very misleading because Very indeed, just... when we take a look at it, based on what we have just said, based on a study of the Bible and the covenants, uh, 
we do not obey all of God's laws. The, 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 and we should not obey all of God's laws. The right. laws that are in the Bible, we should not obey all of them. And if we should seek to obey all of them, as we explore more, if we should seek to obey of all mercy. of them, we will be very unrighteous people. <laughs> My God, that's a strong statement there, you know. Yes. Yes. Mm. Because there is a law, you know, I'm, I'm wrapping it up, <laughs> which says that if your child is obedient, wow. what should stone you do? Them. Stone them. <laughs> stone stone them. them. Yeah. <laughs> it is stone yeah. them, you know. Mm. And uh, the, 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 the law having with the city of refuge, someone mm. does you something bad, mm. you know. And uh, they were supposed to take off the city of refuge. But if yeah. you catch them before that, mm -hmm. kill them. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm so 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 many so many others so many different so so many others so many so many so many so many so many. Uh, so it's a very great point you just made. Yeah. We are not supposed to keep all of God's law in the sense of all. It's all with respect to the particular covenant, the particular arrangement of laws, of covenant under which you find yourself. Yeah. And for the Christian, which one is that? The covenant with Jesus. New covenant. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yeah, come to Jesus. And we will get deeper into that as we continue the study and flesh it out some more. This has been Bible Beyond the Basics. I'm your host of the Clinton Baldwin. And with me has been my co-host, Pastor Moses Marsh and Sister Candice Reynolds. Thank you so very much for sharing with me. And we look forward to meeting with you again next week. Please give us a call at 876-822-9099 or visit us online at dikayoma, D-I-K-A-I-O-M-A dot com or join us in our worship service every Saturday at 10.30 in the morning on a Wednesday evening as well at 7 p.m. We look forward to sharing with you in all these engagements. God bless you real good. Continue to study the Bible as we enjoy the word of God. Bye-bye for now.